Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 79 of The Spear... <laughs> I think it's 79, Spearhead Sunday's podcast. Let me just double check right now uh, and see if we are actually at 79. We could be at, you know, I feel like it's 78. Oh, nailed it, 79. Oh yeah, because last week was Josh Waite. Um, that was a fun, that was a very interesting episode. If you haven't listened to that one, uh, go listen to that if you're interested in fucking, I don't know, I just like talking business with people who seem to get it. It's very rare in this in this business, not many fucking artists know their business. That's why there's so many people walking around selling a million tickets, but they still drive a fucking Honda. Um, Not that I'm one to talk. I I can't even afford a car. (laughs) So yeah, welcome to episode 79 or 78, whatever I said before, that number of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I, guys, look, I've had a, I've had a, a, a struggle of a week. I've had the most frustrating, but also most productive weeks I've had for a long time. I've, you know what? I've been angry this whole fucking week. I've just been, I've, I've just, I've just gone into no excuses mode. So I, I think at the start of this week, sorry, I'm just taking my jumper off because I'm hot now. As I started thinking about all the, all the shit that has happened this week, and I just got angry, <laughs> not hot. Um, this week, man, I had. I, at the start of the week, I was like, you know what? No excuses, Lewis. Okay? You don't have a job. You don't have any responsibilities other than to make some funny shit and to go to the fucking gym. Right? So I was like, this is it. I'm, I'm now with this crowdfund going, you know, with all the people behind me. I got people watching my shit. My channel's going really well. The podcast is the biggest that it's ever been. Lewis, you fucking dog. You got no excuses, man. It's time to step it into overdrive and get fucking huge because I want to get as big as I can before the special comes out. Now I know it's definitely happening, so I'm like, fuck yeah. Let's do this shit. Let's do a steady stream of content and not stop. So at the start of the week, I was like, all right, ready, set, Go. And I immediately ran into a fucking wall. I mean, I got everything done. This is why it's such a productive week, but such an angry week. I got everything that I wanted to do done. Uh, I've even gone to gym. I got out fucking two videos this week and a live stream and this podcast. And after I do this podcast, I'm going to the gym for the third time. Three times a week is what I'm doing at the moment. Then I'm going to bump it up to five next month. All right. But the amount of shit. Oh, also, I posted all of my fucking merchandise and all of the Patreon rewards, which was about, honestly, 50 fucking posters. And I hate posting merchandise. It sucks. And I totally understand why other YouTubers use other services that post it out for you. And so it got to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm just going to use one of these other fucking services. I'm, I don't have to do this myself. It takes hours out of my week, every week, and it's getting too big for one man to do, so, because because you guys are great, I'm not complaining, alright, if you want to get a t-shirt, I love you, but uh, just know that in, in the moment when, I, when I'm packing up your t-shirt and folding it up really nice and looking at your name, okay, Sarah got a small and Michael got a large and writing down your address and printing the label and taking it to the post office, I fucking hate your guts. <laughs> for making me do that terrible job. Throughout that whole period of time, I fucking hate you. But as soon as it's off, I'm like, man, what a great person that is for supporting me. It's so cool that they're wearing my t-shirt. Anyway, so because I hated the the posting so much, I was like, I'm just going to look into these services that do it for you, right? Those print-on-demand shit. So I looked it up, and uh, immediately I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm not using this. Because these fucking print-on-demand services, they print on shitty fucking quality t-shirts. Um, like, Gildan cotton trash. You've, you've, you've worn a bad t-shirt. Like, those fucking t-shirts from Target. That's what they print on. And then the print is always shithouse quality because they just use stock standard for, no matter if they're printing this guy's band t-shirts or that YouTuber's fucking meme t-shirt. It's all the same ink and they don't think about it and it's all done by machines so it often comes out terrible quality. Like, I have a Filthy Frank shirt that was done by those print on demand shits and it's just crap like it's the it's pe- the print is peeling and when i opened up the the shirt when i got it this was a couple of years ago um i got it sent to me 
and then I, I opened it up and the print that they had used, they must have folded it while it was still drying or I don't know what the fuck they did, but they folded it together so the print was touching each other and I unfolded it and I just heard this fucking, this fucking <laughs> it was like, it was like, you know when you stick a sticker? Like the sticky side of a sticker to another sticker and you, it was like that and then half the print fucking came off and I was like, cool, so that t-shirt's fucked. And it was on terrible quality sh- cotton. So anyway, I looked into these fucking services and um, <clears throat> how much they charge. And basically, it's a, it's a rip-off for you and for me. Uh, I was like, you know... Uh, look, I'll, I'll break it down. Um, for the t-shirts that I sell, uh, they cost me $15 to make. And then I sell them for $25. So I make 10 bucks a t-shirt. I, pro- I probably should charge 30 but... Uh, I don't know, just just for me, I feel like, I, I, I like it, I think it's cooler seeing people wear my shirt than, you know, making an extra $5, I don't give a fuck, I probably should sell it for 30 but I just want people to wear the thing, so I was like, okay, I'm currently making 10 bucks a shirt, if I use your service, how much money will I make, and they get back to me, and they're like, okay, cool, so your $25 t-shirt, you would have to charge $30, because you, you do, uh, and you would make uh, $3, <laughs> I was like, what?! Three dollars, you dogs! No, fuck off! I'm not doing that shit. And it's and and the reason why it's a rip off is, is because I know for a fact because I do it because I do my merchandise myself. I choose, I choose fucking everything, man. I'm such a control freak. It's getting out of hand. I choose the 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 type of shirt that it gets printed on. Um, I'm wearing it right now. I choose, um, it's, it's a, a brand that nobody has ever heard of and a brand that I've never seen another shirt print on, but they're fucking great. It's Sportage and it's like this real soft, nice cotton, um, t-shirt. And then I, I chose the, the, the printing method as well. Do, I'll tell you the story of how I chose the printing method for my t-shirts because that's another big thing where there's so many different methods of printing where, you know, one method will look really good online and it'll look really good when you get it, but you wash it three times and it's just fucked. Um, or there's, there's other methods that, that they will last forever, but they like you can feel it when you wear it and it's just crap and it and it's just not good and you can only do one color so it's like finding a balance between oh I want heaps of colors in my design but I want it to last you know without being fucking washed away so um I'll tell you how I found out <laughs> how I chose my fucking print quality because Luke Kidgel thinks this story is hilariously autistic. And by the way, all of his merch is the same as mine in terms of print quality and the t-shirts we use because he's kind of, um, you know, I just, I, you know, I just pass on good information when I get it. So basically what I did is when I decided to do t-shirts, I did my first run of Cyberbully Superstar t-shirts and that was done with screen printing because it was one color and that was okay, but it wasn't the best and they didn't last very long in the wash. I was like, all right, well, when I do my, my next ones, I want them to be really, really good. Like that's when I learned the importance of print quality. So <clears throat> I did my research. I chose, I chose the brand of t-shirt I was going to use. And then what I did was I went to culture Kings, uh, cause I knew that they had so many different brands of t-shirts and, and all of them had like really complex print designs and yeah, culture Kings going in there is fucking cancer, but the t-shirts that they sell are like, real premium streetwear stuff, like they're at the future of fucking fashion design because, you know, I don't know, they want to charge $80 a t-shirt, so they got to give you something at least kind of that you think is worth that money. <laughs> um, so what I did was I went into Culture Kings with the fucking rap music playing, and Culture Kings sucks, man. You walk in there, there's a fucking DJ up the, up the top of the booth. Like, basically what Culture Kings is doing is they're pretending that they're in America, that's what they're doing. They pretend that they're in America. They're pretending that their client base isn't 14-year-old Filipino boys who think they're black and, and fucking Asians who are spending their parents' money while their parents live in Korea and they have no idea that what they said they were spending on fucking $100 <laughs> noodles they are actually spending on a $50 t-shirt, right? That's their client base and they pretend that it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and because there's just not enough black people in Australia to exclusively employ like African Australians, what they do is they just employ Maori dudes, and then they and then the Maori dudes, you know, act like they are black. 
that's that's what culture kings is. Um, and I'm 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 not knocking their strategy. It fucking works. They're geniuses, right? They've got like fifty different. They've got like five stores in all of the major cities, and their social media shit is incredible. Like they Snapchat and Instagram, and they always have like they they always get like the garbage rappers in to do in stores and then they what they do it's so fucking obvious that i can't believe nobody else notices this like what they'll do is they'll get a rapper in and then they will film the rapper buying heaps of shit right buying this t-shirt buying the, oh man i gotta get me these these are the fucking nike air jordan 79s man then they'll lick the sole of the shoe and fucking some 12 year old teenager will nut himself because he'd be like oh dude supreme and all that kind of shit right so they just buy all the hype based brands um and all that kind of shit and then they'll ring it up at the counter and then they'll be like oh you just spent a thousand dollars Wiz Khalifa just spent a thousand dollars at Culture Kings come and be like Wiz Khalifa and and, you know that'll make you happy even though you hate your life Culture Kings right that's basically their their whole thing and then but and then they'll film it and then they'll post it and they're like look Wiz Khalifa spent so much money at Culture Kings and everyone comments like oh you're such a fucking baller bro it's like dude Culture Kings gave him that money to spend. Like th- that's that's why they did it. What do you think they did? They got they paid Wiz Khalifa to come in and browse, <laughs> and he's gonna go, yeah, now nah, man, I am not a fourteen year old Filipino boy. Culture Kings, you sell nothing that I want here. No, they gave him a thousand dollars, and it was part of his contract to spend that money, right? They would have paid him money to come and then they would have given him $1,000 spending money that he was contractually obliged to spend. They basically gave him free shit. It's like when when someone sends me out a t-shirt, which happens never, by the way. I'm fucking shitty about that. When's my, when's Culture King going to pay me $1,000 to show up and buy some shit? Do you know what I would do? If, if Culture King, because they, they have barber shops now, and they go, yeah, come get a cool fucking haircut, and all these 10 year olds will spend $50 of mummy's money, and then come back with some ridiculous fucking fade, and then they'll just get bullied at school. Who do you think you are? <laughs> fucking shit haircut, because the thing with those haircuts is some 12 year old will get a fucking sick looking hairdo, he'll walk out of Culture King's looking like an absolute mad cunt, but then he's too fucking retarded to style it properly the next day, so it just looks stupid, because his mum gave him $50 for a haircut, but she wouldn't spend $30 on the hair product that he had to use to maintain that shit. Oh, I didn't know you needed hairspray to make this work, I thought I could just put water in it, and he ends up just looking fucking stupid. <laughs> right? What am I saying? What was I talking about before this? I don't care. Now I'm yelling about Culture Kings. All right? This is what I would do if they gave me, like, Lewis, we'll pay you $3,000 to come into Culture Kings Melbourne, and then we'll pay you fucking $1,000, and you have to spend that money, and you get all the clothes for free, basically. I'd be like, yeah, sweet. What I would do is I'd go to the barber, and I'd look him in the face and be, yo, give me a reverse mohawk. A what? You heard me, motherfucker. This is Lewis Spears, bowling out in Culture Kings. Give me a fucking reverse mohawk. And then I'd, they'd sit down and all the camera people would be filming it, looking around like, is this dude really going to get a fucking reverse mohawk? That's not going to look good on Instagram. It's not going to look very fucking baller. And I'd be like, yeah, you fucking hurt me, cunt. Give me that reverse mohawk. And then he'll get out the clippers and just, just, just shake. Give me a number one in the middle of my fucking head, all the way from the front to the back. And then I'll walk out, pay him $1,000 for that haircut, and then fucking leave. <laughs> and watch them put that on Instagram. That's what I would do, man. That's what I would do. So, Culture Kings, if you listen to this, hit me up. Pay me four grand, and I'll get a fucking mohawk. And you can put it on Insta, all right? Another thing they do, which which is... I, I'm so... I, I see this shit, and I go, fucking genius. What they do is they'll get the fucking... Um, what are they? Just all of these shoes that people care about because they're rare. Which is just the, the for some reason, an acceptable version of collecting. It's got a brand name on it, so it's cool. Do you know how much I got fucking bullied for collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Dude, if there was a Supreme Box logo on the back of every Yu-Gi-Oh card, I would have girls all over me right now. Oh my god! 
He bought the thing that's a little bit expensive and I know about it. That means he's a cool person. It's like, cunt. Your dude's spending $500 on shoes. He's a retard. <laughs> when, he, when he works minimum wage at KFC, he lined up for three hours and spent a month worth to buy a fucking crowbar with a Supreme logo on it. All right? You're dating an idiot with a lot of Instagram followers. Although so is my girlfriend. Where am I? I can't even... Um... I'm just lost. I was now yelling about... Oh, yeah, what they do, Culture Kings, right? This is their fucking competition. What they do is they'll get the, the, the Yeezys or some Supreme bullshit or just any kind of rare coveted clothing that, that costs a thousand dollars, right? So they'll spend a thousand dollars buying shoes on eBay and then they'll put it into a machine, like one of those skill tester machines. You know them. And then what they'll do is you can't put money into the skill tester. The only way for you to make the skill tester work is if you spend like $250, I think it is, you get one try to get some fucking Yeezys. So people will spend $700 so they can get three tries to get some fucking shoes that they could have just spent $750 on in the first place, and then they wouldn't have to leave with, like, three bags that say Culture Kings on it, which is basically walking home while everyone looks at him and goes, fucking retard fell for the skill tester meme. <laughs> what an idiot. All right? And then, of course, you never win, but they have, like, five stores, and all of these stores have a skill tester in them, um, and... So basically, by the law of averages, there's enough fucking idiots with $250 that they might get one winner a week. So they'll just post it onto their Snapchat, but it's across five stores. So there might be a thousand people trying this fucking game a week. And if one person wins, they don't give a fuck. That's like $250,000 they made off idiots who want to play a fucking game and win some shoes so they get, can get posted on the Culture King's Instagram, which basically is like winning a gold medal for being a fucking dope. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyway, I went into Culture King's uh, to look at the T-shirts. This is how I chose what printing method. Jeez, that was a big rant, wasn't it? I just remembered how much I hate Culture King's. Dude, I haven't even got into the part where I hate my week. Yeah, have I? This is like a deviation on a deviation. This is going to be one of those podcasts where I'll get to the end and the hour will be up and, and it'll just be like, yeah, Lewis never finished that thing he was going to tell us about. <laughs> All right, so this is how I'm going to get through this shit and then I'm going to talk about my week. This is how I chose the printing method for my t-shirts. I went into Culture King's and I immediately hated it and I went around and I just started feeling all of the different t-shirt brands, right? All of the different prints. And I was like, that one's shitty quality. This one's great. This is cool. And then I ended up settling on my favorite kind of print quality. I was like, this feels really high quality. It looks fucking awesome. And there's heaps of colors in it. Um, and then I, uh, I, what I did is I was like, all right, I know that. And then I noted it down. I wrote down the product number and what it was. And then I went home. Of course, I didn't buy it. I'm not giving money to them. Then I went home and I contacted Culture King's customer service. And I was like, hey... I have a very specific life-threatening illness. <laughs> I have an allergy, all right? And I am, aller I am deathly allergic to specific inks in that are used in specific printing methods. Can you please tell me how this t-shirt was printed um, and the method used and what kind of inks were used? Because I really want to buy this t-shirt, but if I buy it and then I die, it's going to be your fault. I didn't say it'll be your fault, but that's what the customer service pr interpreted. So they were like, fuck, we need to go into de detective mode and figure out exactly how this t-shirt was printed. Because if we tell this cunt the wrong thing, he's going to die of his illness that doesn't exist. And then it took them a week, literally, but they got back to me and they said, we use this method with these inks and blah, blah, blah. And, and the shirt is here. So I don't know if you're allergic to those things, but if you're not, you can wear it and then it'll be fine. And I'll be like, yeah, sweet. And then I just noted that down and I took it to a shirt printer and I was like, can you do this? And they, then they went, nah. And then I took it to another one and then went, and I went, can you do this? And they were like, yeah, we can. Sure. That's fuck. That's really high quality. How do you know this much about shirt printing? And I was like, wow, life threatening illness, man. <laughs> um, and then, uh, it got printed up and it's fucking great. Um, the, the t-shirts look great, they feel great, and you can wash them heaps of times, and they don't, uh, disintegrate, which is great. Um, 
So that is the incredibly long-winded story of how autistic I get about making sure the shit that I sell is high quality. <laughs> and that's why I can't let these print-on-demand shirt places fuck me, because one, I'll make no money, and two, you got you guys are just going to get a terrible product. So, I'm just going to have to deal with me posting the merchandise out my own way, and doing it myself until I can get a warehouse or some shit. That's the fucking dream, alright? Anyway, let's talk about my incredibly angry and productive, and also one of the most expensive fucking weeks I've had in a really... Long time. I'm going to tell you how, okay? I broke everything. Everything. I broke all of my fucking equipment in a matter of like six days. I just fucking... I don't know how. I mean, I, I do know how. One part of it is, I'm an idiot. Uh, and But the mo the main reason why is because I, I am just trying to do too much in one tiny fucking room, right? My bedroom is an office, it's where I sleep, it's where I live, and then it's also like this fucking film studio that doesn't have enough room. I got this fucking green screen for bi-monthly bulls, so I have studio lights <clears throat> that light the fucking thing, and then I also have, uh, on the other side of the wall, I've got the Lou Review shelf, and that's where the camera goes, and it's just, I've managed somehow to fit two completely different film sets, and a bed, and the rest of my life, and an office into the one fucking tiny space, which is barely big enough for a bedroom anyway, without all that shit. So I am just living in... There's no room for anything. That's why when I do this podcast, you always hear me fucking moving shit around, because everything is just in, in the way of another thing, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, let me start off with the first thing that broke, alright? I was at Jasmine's house, and she comes over to me, and she steps on my headphones. Broken. And I was really mad. Not at her, just at myself, because they were on the fucking floor. I had these big, ugly gaming headphones, which were quite expensive. You know the ones, they're like wireless. They look really cool. They've got LEDs on, the, on either side of them. Oh, they don't look really cool, but they look like they sound really cool. And they sound fucking incredible. But they look like you're wearing two VB cans on either side of your fucking head. Luke always made fun of me for wearing them. And whenever I posted photos of me wearing them when I was at the gym, everyone was like, boy, what the fuck are you wearing on your head? <laughs> because gaming headphones are not meant to look cool when you leave the house because... The type of person that owns gaming headphones does not leave the house, so it doesn't matter. Not a priority, alright? So I had those fucking things, and I was using them for everything, because they were the only headphones I had. I used them for editing, for listening to music, for making music, and for gaming, and, and I left the house with them, which was uh, probably embarrassing, but, you know, your man's got to listen to his Aussie rap. So anyway, Jasmine stepped on them and broke them, and I was like, fuck! And then, I, I have this bad habit... <clears throat> Of whenever... Does anybody else do this? I have this in really bad habit of whenever I break something, I immediately rage purchase a replacement. <laughs> does anybody else do that? Like, I'll get so fucking angry. I'll be like, oh, my fucking headphones are broken. Now I need new headphones. And I'll look up and I'll just buy some fucking expensive headphones. I'll be like, oh, I fucking look how expensive these are. This makes me angrier. And then I'll just get into this fucking circle of rage that, that, that makes me go, I fucking hate consumerism. I hate how everything is made to be broken. So you have to buy a fucking replacement. And it makes me so mad. Look how expensive these new ones are. I shouldn't have to do this. And then I'll buy them and then I'll be like, Look how much fucking money I spent on these things. They're going to break in two weeks. And then, I don't know. I do that all the time. Where Whenever I break something, I immediately rage purchase a new fucking thing and spend too much money. It's a fucking shitty habit. Let me know if you also do this, if you rage buy replacements. Or if you rage buy anything else. Let me know if that's a thing that happens. It's dumb, but I do it. Anyway, so I buy fucking Beats headphones. I buy- I, I go from gaming headphones because one, I was sick of fucking all of you cunts making fun of me whenever I posted photos of me wearing them. I was sick of that, so I'm like, alright, fine, I'm just gonna buy the fucking Beats because they look good. And I didn't buy the ones with the big fucking B's on either side. I bought the black ones that were, even when the logo was black so nobody could fucking tell you're wearing them. Everyone just looks like, oh, he's got wireless headphones on. I'm not into that fucking showing off brands bullshit. Oh, look how much I paid for fucking headphones. Aren't I an idiot? 
And, you know, fuck everybody that goes, oh, Beats are good headphones. You know, they're overpriced. Really, are they? Are they really overpriced? I mean, let me, let me clarify this. I agree with you. They are overpriced. They're too expensive. But also, is there a single other fucking over-the-ear headphone on the market that is wireless, sounds good, and doesn't make you look like a fucking idiot? No, there's not. They don't exist. You go into JB Hi-Fi and you look at all the headphones and it's like, oh, do you want to wear a spaceship on your ears? No, can't. It's like anything remotely within the Beats price range just looks so fucking ridiculous and over the top because they can't compete with how Beats look. So all they really have is, oh, we're, we're in high fidelity sound and uh, blah, blah, which means we took our design budget and we put it into the speaker budget and we, you know, increased the quality of the sound by 3%. But it doesn't matter because everybody, while you're listening to your fucking Mozart and being like, oh, it sounds like I'm really in 1892, doesn't it? Everyone is looking at you and being like, dude, is that guy from a fucking steampunk convention? What is he wearing these cans on his fucking ears? They're huge. Even worse than my gaming headphones, alright? So I got the fucking Beats because, you know, they basically, they, I knew they would sound good and I knew they would look good and I knew they would talk to my phone, which I got a fucking iPhone and it's just, <clears throat> dude, every time I break something, I fall deeper into the blue cunt shirt store fucking hole. And now I know if my Beats headphones start wor not working, I'm going to have to go to the fucking Apple store and yell at them and they're going to try and charge me money for shit that's their fault, alright? Anyway, I got the fucking headphones, and uh, they they come with noise cancelling. I don't want noise cancelling headphones. If you don't know what noise cancelling headphones is, basically, what the headphone has microphones on the outside, and they listen to what's going on outside, and what they'll do is they will play the opposite frequency through the headphones. So any kind of background noise, any kind of leave or wind noise, or birds chirping, as soon as you put the fucking Beats headphones on, or anything with noise cancelling, you cannot hear the outside world, which I don't want. In headphones, I listen. I have headphones when I'm outside of the house. I want to be able to hear when I'm about to be hit by a car. Like I don't want your fucking noise cancelling bullshit. But I was like, whatever. All right, I'll just have the Beats headphones. I'll buy them, and then they'll, you know, I'll just turn the noise cancelling off. Anyway, they arrive. You can't turn it off. It's mandatory noise cancelling. So when you put these fuckers on and you're not playing music, it's this weird like noise that sounds like you're listening to the sea that just goes because it's just playing the opposite frequency to whatever it's hearing outside of the headphones i mean it's annoying when there's no music playing when when music is playing you can't tell that there's that like, there's no noise other than the music but you also cannot hear a fucking thing like i can't like i can't even hear my own footsteps when i'm walking which is something that i could always hear listening to headphones and now i know that i'm going to get hit by a fucking car cuz i can't hear it coming doesn't matter how many times i check the the road i'm like yeah i've got noise canceling headphones i'm going to fucking die dude you know what they should come out with i'm thinking of making a video about it they should come out with just noise and vision cancelling headphones <laughs> I was thinking of doing this video where this guy puts on the new Beats headphones and the noise cancelling thing plays and then the person tries to talk to them but he can't hear them and then he turns on vision cancelling and he can't see shit and it, it's just like an ad for the new Beats headphones and he's just bumping into shit and burning his hands and getting hit by cars I think that'd be funny. Nobody else make that video. That's my idea. I'm going to do that at some point. I think that's hilarious. Anyway, so I got the fucking Beats, and to everyone who was saying, oh, they sound shit for the price, dude, they sound incredible. And I highly, and I really do doubt that I could find anything better. Oh, I, actually, you know what? I bet I could find something better than them, but I don't think that I would give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, it's music, dude. At the end of the day, it comes down to how it was recorded and who made the fucking music. You can listen to great music on iPhone speakers and you'll still vibe with it. It doesn't fucking matter. Just all these nerds going, oh, I hate Apple. And I am that person too, so I'm a fucking hypocrite. What do you want from me, huh? I never said I was a professor. I never said I was someone to look up to. I've always said that I'm a fucking idiot with anger issues, all right? So let's get on to the next thing that I fucking broke this week. So day one, all right, of the week, I break my headphones and I rage purchase a replacement. Then I get home. Headphones are home, try them out, cool, this sounds great, oh man, noise cancelling, can't be turned off, that's annoying, whatever. Now it's time to film bi-monthly bull, so I'm like, I'm going to get bi-monthly bull out on Thursday. 
As you know, it didn't come out on the Thursday. It came out the Tuesday after. All right? I'll tell you why. Because I started filming and... Uh, no, actually, this is how I started the day. So on Tuesday, no, this was, this was day two, all right? So on Tuesday, I wake up to the sound of my studio lights hitting the ground and smashing into a thousand pieces. And immediately I woke up, this is about six in the morning. My alarm had just gone off, so I stretched my legs and my studio and all the lights are so close to the bed that I kicked it over. And I woke up and I just saw, no, I woke up before I hit the ground because I did kick it and then I immediately went, fuck my lights. And I woke up and I just saw this thing slowly tipping towards the ground, lights first. And I just ran out of my bed, I jumped up and I tried to grab it and I was too late, I missed and it smashed on the ground and I just heard this of the sound of like expensive fucking studio lights smashing and hitting the ground and the first thing that I say when I wake up is fucking cunt alright so I woke up and, and that was my whole day ruined within three seconds I was so fucking mad because I was like because the re main reason why I was angry was because that was the second pair of lights that I had smashed. <laughs> the first pair of lights uh, happened before, but I had, I had three, I bought three lights. So I smashed one and I was mad. This was months ago, but it didn't matter because I only ever needed to use two. So, but then I smashed the second one. And I was just fucking so mad. And, and lights are so important for the green screen because if you don't if you don't have good lighting the green screen just doesn't work so I was like well fuck now I can't film this fucking video and I'm not going to get it out when I want to get it out actually this happened on Thursday not Tuesday anyway you know the fucking deal is that this it's at some point in the week I smashed my lights and then I was just so fucking angry because I was just mad because the studio lights that I did have there were cheaper ones but because they were really big and there were, there were lights instead of LED panels, but I bought the lights and I was like, oh, it'll be fine. I'll be able to pack them down, but they're too big and too annoying to pack down. So I had to leave them set up in my room, which took up heaps of space and obviously, you know, led to them being broken. So I was just fucking angry about me not buying the expensive lights and me smashing the lights and having to delay buy monthly bull and, and just my entire living situation, which is one room. And then I was raging, ah, oh, fuck, I can't afford to move out. I want a fucking warehouse. I want an office. I want a film space. And I can't fucking afford any of this shit. I'm sitting at home. You know, I'm bored of being at home. I've been home for fucking 23 years and I got no money. I can't get out of this fucking place. And I was just fucking raging. And then I'm typing in replacement LED panels and I just rage spent $700 on fucking LED panels and then I was like fuck um and then I replaced them and then I figured out a way to light it and then that's why bi-monthly ball was delayed to the Tuesday after but I got it out and I'm really happy with that video so that was the second fucking thing that happened that I smashed and then had to replace right Third thing, when I finally figure out some some temporary lights, and while I'm because my LED panels have not arrived yet, um, because they're coming from another country, they haven't arrived yet. So I figured out a replacement, and I was like, all right, I think this will look okay. Fortunately, it looked great, um, but it's still, you know, I still need my replacements there on the way. So then I set up my camera, and I set up everything, and I get it ready to go. Um, if you don't know, I bought a new new camera recently and the screen on the back of it doesn't flip around so I had to buy like a replacement monitor which is basically like a like a really big screen that you put on top of the camera so you can see what you're filming it's actually a fucking great investment it, even if I don't even if the camera did not have the flippy thing I'm really glad that I bought that monitor because it just allows me to see properly what I'm filming alright so Anyway, it has a cable that goes from the monitor into the camera so the camera knows to put the screen on the monitor instead of, you know, play it from the back. So, I plug it in, turns out the fucking little cable that I've been using is broken. I don't know how it broke, it just stopped working. It was the one that came with it. They probably sent me a super fucking cheap one. So now I'm like, fuck, I can't fucking see what I'm filming. I can't figure out how to focus it. I don't know how to do this shit. I need a camera person. And then I just started raging about, I can't fucking afford somebody else to film this shit. I gotta do all this shit myself. I wish I was in a film space. If I was in a film space, I could just leave this shit set up and then walk into the office, sit down in the chair and hit record. But because I fucking live in the same place where I film, I have to pack it 
it down and reset it up and it takes an hour out of my day every time I want to fucking film and it just makes me angry and then I'm just raging again about how I want to fucking warehouse but I can't afford one. <laughs> and then um, I rage purchase not one, not two, but three fucking HDMI cables, expensive ones, so that they were reinforced and they wouldn't fucking break, because the, the amount of cables that I've broken, like my iPhone charger, I spent $30 on a metal one, because I broke the Apple one, and then I broke the cable one, the fabric one, so I bought a fucking metal one. <laughs> and then I did that with the HDMIs, where I bought fucking, you know, $10 ones that were, that were good quality, um, and would not fucking break. And then, anyway, so... I had to figure out how to film without being able to see what I could see. Fortunately, bi monthly will look great visually. I think it was a little bit off. Um, it was a little bit too low, but it, it's too late. It's out, and I'm really happy with it. So that was day three, where I broke the fucking cable. Oh, also, I went up to the computer shop, and they said, oh, we don't have these cables, so I had to buy them online, and they've arrived, and they work fine. So that was day three, all right? So, so far, I've broken my headphones, and then I, bought, then I rage bought Beats. Then, the next day, I broke my studio lights, and I rage-bought LED panels. And then the day after that, I broke my fucking HDMI cable, and I rage-bought three <laughs> replacements. Then, day fucking four, I go on, and I start editing by monthly bull to get it up on Tuesday. And earlier in the year, I felt... I, I was like, you know what, I'm making enough money from Patreon to purchase all of the digital programs that I had pirated when I couldn't afford to buy them. So I bought Final Cut and then I started paying for Adobe. If you don't know, for whatever fucking reason, Adobe was like, hey, instead of selling Photoshop and all of the other programs that we use and letting people own them forever, why don't we remove the option for people to buy them and then we just charge them a monthly fee so that they will be chained up to paying Adobe fucking $40 a month for the rest of their life if they want to work in the creative business. Even if they're a student, we'll charge them a reduced rate if they're a student, but we'll still tether them to our fucking evil company. Which goes back to my saying, any company with more than six employees is fucking evil. And any, any business with more than a hundred employees is fucking Hitler, alright? That's, that's the scale. You have seven employees, your business is now evil. I don't even care, even if you're a fucking charity, alright? Because people think they're throwing money to the poor, but their money is going to seven staff, and they're all sales staff, and they organize events, and they pay fucking celebrity ambassadors, and that's where all the money goes, and then 3% ends up going to fucking Toko living with AIDS in Africa, alright? As soon as your company hits seven, it's fucking evil. I'll never employ more than six, more than six people. <laughs> All right? What's I saying? What am I talking about? Oh, yeah, Adobe, right? So they they figured out that they need to charge people monthly. So I was like, whatever, fine, Adobe. I pay for Netflix every month. Netflix never breaks, so I'll pay for your fucking programs. So I start paying $40 a month for fucking Adobe programs, like Photoshop, and then I use um, I use After Effects to for the, the, the Lure Review intro, and I use a few, I use their script writing software, Story. is really, really good for writing scripts when I do sketches and shit. Um, so anyway, I'm paying for that. And then I set up Photoshop so I can do the graphics for bi-monthly bull. All of those little funny pictures that pop into the screen, I do them in Photoshop myself. Which, I don't know why I decided to do. I did it because all of Today Show, Tonight Shows fucking do them. But then I was like, oh, I'll do them. That'll be funny. That'll make it like a really high quality fucking production. And it is. They look great. I'm really happy with them. But it's just added like hours to my workload. Where I'm like, I think that I've finished editing a video. But now I'm like, oh, I've got to edit in fucking 20 different graphics and photoshop them all and then fucking move them in and it's just it's just added fucking hours onto my workflow so anyway i start up photoshop and it just doesn't work it's just stopped working adobe's like you your trial has expired i'm like i'm not on a trial i'm fucking paying for it i log into my account and it's like yep you're paying for this you're not on a trial but then i try and open the program and it's like <laughs> you're on a trial and it's expired and I'm just yelling at the computer, I was never on a fucking trial! And then I was just mad because I deleted the pirated version. 
that I had where I was like, you know what? I don't need the pirated version anymore. I'm paying for it now. Obviously, this version will work better. How fucking wrong was I? Dude, never, never rent anything. Never pay for a subscription service for a fucking program. It's all bullshit. Pirate Photoshop. It's the, it's the biggest ripoff, and they make so much money. Like, really, when you think about it, if they're charging $40 a month for you to use fucking Photoshop, by the end of the year, you've paid them five, almost $500, and then you got to pay them that every fucking year for the rest of your life. By the end of you, by the time you get to the end of your graphic design career, you've paid Adobe, like, fucking $100,000 just to use one program, instead of paying them $400 once and owning it. It's bullshit. And that's why I'm not, that's why I'm selling my special for $5 and you own the fucking file. And there's no DRM, there's no nothing. And I understand that makes it easier to, to pirate, but if people pirate it, fine, they're assholes. I feel like most people are, are going to fucking pay for it because it's $5 and I put a lot of work into it. But it, it, I just hate... I just, I would just hate to do that to somebody where they pay $5 to get my special, they open it on their phone, then they open it on their laptop, and then they try and open it on their TV, and then this fucking message pops up and goes, Ooh, sorry, Lewis is a cunt, you can only use this on two devices, you cannot watch this, even though you paid for it, I would hate to do that to somebody, so that's why I'm charging $5, because, I don't know, it's gonna, it's gonna make it a lot easier to pirate, but I fucking, I don't know, I trust you guys, and it's, and, and, and I feel like that encourages more people to pay for it, you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, I'm actually gonna own the file. I just get a fucking file, and it works everywhere. I can put it on a USB, and, you know, take it to my friend's house, and we can watch it together, and there's no fucking message that's gonna pop up and be like, eh, you can't use this here. Like, fucking Adobe has done to me. Anyway. Oh, I'm so mad. We haven't even gotten through the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I ended up having to call them, and I was sitting on the phone for two hours, and I had to cancel the podcast with Josh Wade and move it to the next day, because I'm like, I have to fucking get this video out, and I end up talking to Adobe, and I'm like, yeah, your program says I'm on a trial, I'm not on a trial, am I? They're like, no, we're not, and then they, had to, then they fixed it somehow, I don't know how. And, I, and, I, and I, I was like, hey, is there any way that I can just buy Photoshop once and then use it offline? And they're like, yeah, no, we remove that. I'm like, cool, you guys are fucking great. How many employees do you have? Over six? Yeah, you're fucking evil. Anyway. <laughs> this fucking podcast is so angry today. But you know what? I feel like that happens every time I have a guest. Because I use this podcast to fucking vent, and for some reason you can't enjoy it. Um... But whenever I can't do it for, for a whenever I miss a week because I have a lovely chat with an interesting guest, I come back to the next episode with two weeks of pent up fucking ranting ready to go. All right, so let's just do a recap. Broke my headphones, bought Beats. Broke my lights, bought expensive LED panels. Broke my cable, bought new cables. Broke Adobe, tried to buy, tried to, I tried to rage spend more money so I can own the program. Wasn't able to, but was f was fully prepared to fucking do that shit. Couldn't do it. All right. So now we're up to the final day. I got buy monthly bull out. That was great. And then I'm like, cool. And, and by the way, throughout this whole week, I was so fucking angry, but I was like, no excuses. I got my bi-monthly bull out, I went to gym twice, and then I, then it was time to film my crowdfund update video. Um, so I, I sit down, I get my wireless microphone up, I put it in my back pocket, I sit down, I film the whole video, it was great, it looked great, it was on the couch, everything was fucking great, I was real funny, it was all off the cuff shit, it was, it was totally organic and everything. And then I, go in and I start editing it and there's no sound. There is zero sound. There's sound in the first three clips, but then the rest of the clips have no sound. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I checked the batteries. All of the lights were connected. The two wireless microphones were connected. It says there was sound on there. What's going on? So I watch back the footage and I find out where the sound cuts out. And it's when I sit down because the fucking wireless lapel microphone was in my back pocket. I sit down on the couch and the cord got caught under my ass and it yanked against something, against itself, I guess. And I think I broke the cord within the, the wireless lapel that, that goes up from the transmitter to my, um, to my t-shirt where I keep the microphone. That wire, right? The microphone to the transmitter. That's what I broke, I think. 
and then I just fucking cracked it. And I, I thought that I fixed it, and then I refilmed it, and then it still had zero sound. So then I had to go and move to my bedroom and put the shitty shotgun mic that has heaps of echo whenever I use it and just, and sit in the corner of my room and refilm it for the third time. So if you watch my crowdfund update video on my channel that I just put out on Thursday night, you can probably notice that I'm putting on a brave face and I'm and I'm I'm happy, but uh, inside there is a fire, a fucking rage building up yelling about my fucking wireless microphone. You're supposed to put it in your back pocket. Why would you put in the mu- in the fucking instructions to put it in your back pocket if it cannot withstand being sat on? What the fuck is this? So that video, I I look really happy, but to people who have listened to this, go and rewatch it. I am fucking raging. It's the third time I had to film it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just thinking about how I'm going to buy a new fucking wireless lapel. But I, I ended up putting out the video, and, and so many people responded really positively to the crowdfund. It made me fucking, you know, heaps of people pledged, and it looks like we're going to smash past the third goal. So I did get over my rage, and I am quite zen at the moment. It, it doesn't sound like it, but I'm just mad because I'm remembering all of this shit that I went through. Um, as I do, pretending this thing is fucking therapy. Um... And uh, I haven't bought. I'm going to try and fix it. I think I can fix it. And um, so yeah, that 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 was my that was my week. Let's do a quick fucking recap of all the shit that I broke. I broke my headphones. I broke my studio lights. I broke my HDMI cable. I broke my Photoshop, and then I broke my wireless lapel. All right, that's all the shit. And I, I I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like there was something else that I broke. I'll tell you about it next week. So that was all of the fucking shit that I went through this week. But I didn't fucking quit. I got through everything that I needed to do. I posted all of my merchandise. I posted all the Patreon rewards. I went to gym. I'm about to go for the third time. I've been eating properly and I put out two videos and I did a live stream. That was the other thing that I broke. I broke the fucking thing that holds that holds the phone. The the clamp that holds my phone. So in the live stream I'm balancing it on top of my laptop and I only figured out that I broke it fucking Oh, I need to get out of this house. I need to move out. But I just, I don't know. I I don't know what to do. I just can't afford it yet. Hopefully next tour or next year, you know, my fucking YouTube and everything will start jumping up and the ticket sales will be more and I'll be able to move out. I'm just, uh, and buy a car. I'm just, I don't know. I think I'm just going a little bit crazy after living in the same bedroom literally for 23 years. I don't know. But, you know, that's why I try to be honest about my money with you guys because it's, um... I don't want, I, I don't like the idea of people thinking that I've made it or that I'm making heaps of money or I'm a millionaire or anything because it's not true. And, and, and I would, I would like, and I do believe that it will become true and I would like to bring people on that fucking journey. So whenever shit like this happens and, and I spend a dangerous amount of money, I mean, thank fuck I have Patreon. Jesus Christ. I mean, that the, the money that I spent replacing all of the equipment uh, as, as, as much as I, you know, I need, I need headphones for work, I need the studio lights for work, I need fucking HDMI cables, and I need Adobe, and all, and I need a wireless microphone, so even though I broke all of that fucking shit, uh, and I'm an idiot for breaking it, it thank fuck Patreon is there, because other, otherwise I would just, you know, I would just run out of money. That'd be the last of the fucking tour money gone, spent on replacing all of this equipment, and, and really that, the money that I made for the tour is for food, not equipment, so, you know. Appreciate everyone supporting me on Patreon that gives me a budget, not only to make videos, but to replace equipment if I break it or, or buy new equipment if I need it. And one day, I'll be able to get out of this fucking house and move out, and then I'll tell you. Yeah, that basically, I'll fucking... If, the, moment I, the moment I'm actually making a substantial amount of money, I'll fucking tell you about it, and I'll tell you how I did it. Until then, I'm going to be very honest and complain about how fucking frustratingly... Almost poor I am. I know there's, there's a million people doing worse than me. It's not like I'm... I don't know what I'm complaining about. It's not like I've got fucking AIDS and I'm earning 10 cents an hour building iPhones chained to a desk. I get to make 20 cents an hour making fucking YouTube videos. <laughs> um, all right. what, a, Dude, I can't believe we've, we're 40 minutes in. I had so much other shit to talk about. Um, I'm... Am I going to do miscellaneous bit? You know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it, guys. There's no miscellaneous bit at the end. Thank the Lord. 
Okay, thank the fucking Lord. Just kidding, we're doing it. We have to do it every episode. Oh, man, you got excited, didn't you? That's all right. It's a short one today. It's just an update. Hang on, let me get these emails back oh, up. I'll be back in a sec. All right, isn't editing amazing? I was, was fucking going for ages trying to find this email. Okay, if you want to send me an email, if you got need some life advice, or you got a funny story to tell me, or you got revenge on somebody, or whatever, you know the shit that I like, uh, send it to podcast at com. Now, we have an update from last week's question that me and Josh Wade uh, handled about a guy who got involved with a cuckold situation where he fucked, he was not the cuck, he was, I don't know what the terminology is, I'm not into that shit. It's, he, was, he was the guy who fucked the wife. All right, so he, he's a 23-year-old dude and he rooted this 30-something-year-old woman that he worked with. He worked in the same office and the husband also worked in the same company in a different building, but still, same company. Like, that's some fucking, don't, don't fuck where you eat, man. I, the, uh, I can't say this enough, don't fuck your co-workers. And especially not if one of them's married and, you, and the husband thinks that he's in on it. Anyway, of course, as you would expect, it went badly and the husband hated it and uh, they everyone agreed not to do it again and blah, blah, blah. Listen to the fucking episode. I'll, here's the update. Um, stop now if you haven't heard it. Go and listen to the podcast or at least the end of me and Josh Waits because here we go. Update time on the cucking scenario. To clarify things from the episode last week, no, the husband was not watching. Well, I don't understand. I don't... This is what I don't get about the whole cucking thing. If you're into it, surely you'd want to watch. Like, I love ice cream. Ice cream is the shit. I fucking love ice cream. But, I mean, I mean, I, I want to be there when it's eaten. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to... I'm trying to think of another, of another scenario. Okay, let's say I have a, I got a, a five-year-old son. This isn't going to be a weird thing, right? Let's say I got a five-year-old son, and I, I'm like, you know what? I really want my son to uh, try out horse racing for the, I don't know, maybe he's eight. I want to see my son. I want my son to ride horses. I think that'd be really cool. I'd love to see him enjoy himself. Why would I not go? Well, I'm just going to sit home and then not oh, tell me about it later. No, that that went way too sexual. <laughs> it's an eight-year-old son. But you know what I mean? Like, if you're into that cuck shit, surely you want to watch, at least. Nah, here's what it's like. I love movies. I want to, like, I want to, it's, it's like, it's, you know what it's like? If you're into this cuck shit and then you send your wife to fuck somebody else and you stay at home and then they tell you about it, that's like me. I really want to see the new Dunkirk movie. So I send my girlfriend to watch it, and then she tells me a bit about what it was like. That's what that's like. Like, why would you send someone else to enjoy the movie? Why don't you go and fucking watch it if you like the movie so much? Don't send someone else to do it. Weird. I don't get it. Anyway, the hu- no, the husband was not watching. That would have been far too weird for me. Part of it was she had to t- go and... Part of it was she had to go and tell him about it afterwards. I just don't... Don't understand it. Anyway, which is weird as fuck, but hey, if you want to hear about how your wife enjoyed sleeping with another guy, you do you. I think if it hadn't fucked him up so bad, he would have wanted to watch if this all continued. Cucks are weird. Yeah, I'm on your side, man. I I just don't, I just don't, I don't understand it. Oh, actually, if somebody is genuinely into this shit, can you, um, can you tell me why? Can you explain why? If you, if you, if I don't know if any cucks listen to this podcast, uh, I won't, I won't judge you for it. If you're into this shit, can you explain why? I'm always fascinated by this weird sex stuff. I don't understand why you'd be into this. So if you are into it, enlighten me. Send me an email, uh, or or if you have been involved on e on in any side. If you're a woman who's done it, if you're a dude who's watched, if you're a guy who has been the 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 cucker, <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right. So since last week, the wife has returned to Australia. The husband has moved out, and things. Are st- oh, you ruined their marriage, dude. Fuck. You. I hope you're proud of yourself, because otherwise I would just feel guilty. You destroyed a marriage with your dick. I hope it was worth it, man. The husband has moved out, and things have started to settle down. I've spoken with her about not wanting to get more emotionally invested in me because I have no intention of committing to anything which she's completely fine with. Good move, man. You don't want to date the girl who just fucks around. 
Um, we've agreed to let things to return to normal before considering doing anything. Oh, no, you idiot. Just put your foot down and say we're not doing anything again. You're dumb as fuck, bro. Oh, let's just let's just leave this incredible sexual tension alone and then and then we'll see what happens. You're an idiot, bro. I'm sorry. I mean, you're you're a legend and you've got a great story, but you've done the wrong thing here, man, because you know what's going to happen? Now she's fucking single. Now she's gotten rid of the husband that was the only barrier between you and her, and she's just going to get more obsessed with you and she's going to justify it to herself by going, "Oh, well, you know, we don't I don't have a husband anymore, I'm a single woman, so now it will be a lot easier for me and Zach to get together, and it'll be fine. It's your, you, you shot yourself in the foot, bro, you've got a stalker now, I guarantee you. Um, before considering doing anything, which I think is best, as it gives her time to get her emotions in order and start to sort out her marriage. What marriage? It's fucked, you fucked it up. You fucked her, and then you fucked their marriage. Hopefully in that time she'll lose a, at least a bit of interest in me and start to move on. If not, I might as well dig my own grave and have a bit more fun. Yeah, you're an idiot. You know what? I love you though because you know. You're like, this is a bad idea, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, I might as well dig my own grave and have a bit more fun. I'll do it for the podcast. <laughs> do it for the potty. Yeah, boys. If I get murdered, dedicate an episode to me, please. I absolutely will, man. Um, please, please... Um, Organize a friend to uh, email into the podcast if you get murdered, because obviously you'll be dead. So just tell them to explain the story. Have a pact. If I die, fucking this dude's wife, email Lewis Spears. The world needs to know. All right, you're a hero. At least this shit will be one hell of a story when it's all over. Super fucking excited for the comedy special. Have a shit one, Zach. Thank you very much, bro. Appreciate it. I'm also excited for the special. Um, you know what? You, I, I don't have, I don't have anything to say to you, man. You sound, you seem very aware of what you're doing and and the uh, consequences that are going to come about. So fucking come back with a sick story, man. If you're going to make bad decisions, you better come back with a good story. All right, I'm looking forward to the next update. You fucking madman. <laughs> all right, guys, um, that's about the end of the podcast. I just wanted to say really quickly, um that this is the final week of the crowdfund for the comedy special. And at this point, I uh, am I, I don't need money. Um, the, the project is funded. It's overfunded. We've done stretch goals where uh, we've hit three stretch goals. Now we're at $40,000, which is the, the, the craziest thing. It's fucking, I know, I know I keep saying this. I do keep saying this and it's getting fucking repetitive, but it keeps happening. You guys keep fucking exceeding expectations and passing stretch goals. And, and now, you know, we've got, we've got to add new cameras in there. We've got to fucking do a documentary. And now I, I get to go overseas and perform and that's fucking so cool because I, that would never be able to happen. And now I don't have to worry, you know, if, if I can only get a hundred people to turn up and I lose money on the flights and accommodation and, and the venue hire, that's fine because we've, it's what, it was one of the stretch goals. So I don't have to worry about how many tickets I'm going to sell. I can just go over and perform for people who want to see me. And that's fucking so cool. So thank you so much to everyone who's pledged and, um, at this point, I just want, I, I, I want you to see it. So if you're listening to this, if you like my podcast, if you like anything that I do, please consider putting five bucks in and you'll get a download of the special. Right now, there are, as of this recording, um, 2,031 people uh, have uh, are going to see the special. So they, they've put in at least five bucks and I would love to get that number to 3000. That's kind that was kind of my goal when I set out. It wasn't, it wasn't money. It was just, I want as many people as possible to see this thing. So if you like this stuff and you can spare five bucks, um, chuck it into the crowd fund and you'll get the download as soon as it, as it comes out. Um, so that's really what I want to get. We have six days left. So you've got six days to get five bucks and chuck it in. I would really, really appreciate it because I, um, I just want you to see it. So thank you very much to everyone who's pledged. Um, I had, I had so much shit that I wanted to say this week, but, um, I'll, I'll tell you about it next week. It's not about the crowdfunding. It's just some little updates about the special and, and what we're working on. So yeah, I'll talk to you about it next week. But, um, if, if I could ask one thing of you guys, please 
just put five bucks in before the the crowd fund ends because when it ends that's it so yeah thank you very much for listening let's get that number to three thousand people i would love for three thousand people to see this thing thank you very much for listening please do pledge and uh i'll talk to you next week have a shit one